Uh, so, so far, uh, number of ways to permute n items is n factorial. And one of the example was if you want to know how many ways you can permute A, B, C, D, E. So you can write A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, E, D, uh, and then you, you can also do A, B, D, C, E, and then you can just think about all the ways that you can shuffle these around. And if you write all of them down, how many <coughs> different ones can you get? Five factorial, which is 120. 120. Okay, so that's what we learned so far. Today, I want to talk about permutations with uh, repetitions. Okay. So, if you have things that repeat, how many ways can you uh, shuffle them? So, for example, here's a question: How many ways? Can you arrange uh, A, B, C, C? Let's think about this question. Some of you already know the answer. Do you know the answer? Huh? Three factorial? No, not quite. Uh, 24? Four factorial? Well, if these were different, it would be four factorial, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, so let's think about the following uh, solution. If C and C are distinguished, say you, you want to say C1 and C2, if these are distinguished, right, then certainly A, B, C, 1, C2 are different from A, B, C2, C1, right, if they're distinguished. But what this is saying is that those two C's are not distinguished, so that these two different things will become the same thing. Do you, do you understand? Okay. So if you were to list uh, all the permutations of A, B, C, 1, C, 2, which, by the way, is the same thing as uh, listing all the ways you can arrange A, B, C, D, right? We did that last time. We wrote every possible way. It's the same, same story, except that instead of CD, you'll be writing C1, C2, right? So you're going to be writing 24 of them. But for each one of them, you will have a counterpart, which is the same thing. So for example, if you had A, C1, uh, B, C2, this is same as which one? A, C2, B, C1, right? So if they are distinguished, if C1 and C2 are distinguished, these two will be different. But once you delete these, <coughs> they will the be the same, right? So there's a reduction by a factor of? Factor of? Two. Two distinct ones become <coughs> one, right? So uh, there's a reduction by a factor of? <coughs> so, so ignoring? <coughs> Distinction reduces the count by one half. So as we see, it must be twenty four factorial, which was the total ways to permute this. You divide this by two, and therefore you need to get twelve. Okay, is that good? Now let's think about the, another case, example two. What if it was same same story about A B C C C? Okay, yeah. You, you would, have we, would you divide by one third then, or close? <laughs> Four. Huh? Divide by three? Not three. Huh? Four? No. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> So first, the tau will be 5 factorial, 
we agree with that, right? Yeah. yeah. If it was all, if if C1, C2, C3 were all different, then it would be five factorial. But there's a forgetting phase where C1, C2, C3 is the same thing as C2, C1, C3, and the same thing as C, C. Do it do dictionary order. Okay, C1, C3, C2, C2, C1, C3, C2, C3, C1, C3, C1, C2, C3, C2, C1. You have six different things becoming the same thing once you forget them, right? So what are you supposed to divide by? Six. Six. Now, is there a better way to see why it should be six? What is six? It's really three factorial. That's what's happening. So uh, that 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 will be the answer. By the way, this will be 120 divided by six, which will be 20. Well, 20 will be the answer. And uh, using this idea, you can answer questions like. Uh, uh, Can you shuffle or rearrange the letters of Mississippi okay so let's uh, count the letters one two three four five six seven eight nine. 10, 11, right? And then uh, M appears once, so you can even divide by one factorial. It doesn't do anything, right? I appears how many times? Four. One, two, three, four times. So what do you divide by? Four, four factorial. Anytime you have uh, the same, uh, you have repetitions, you just divide by that factorial, okay? SSSS, divide by? Four factorial. Four factorial. <coughs> and you divide by? Two. Two because of the P. Okay. So do that's you, what you need. Huh? Do, you, uh, do you add those all together or you multiply all those? Get all These those are all multiplied. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it, it's really like you have this thing and then four factorial is divided and then another four factorial is divided, another two factorial is divided. That's what's really happening. But if you do that, then it's the same thing as multiplying all the denominators. All right, so you have, what's that, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and one of the four factorials will cancel this much, right? And then 4, 3, 2, 1, then 2. Uh, I guess uh, 4 times 2 is 8, and then 3 times 2 is 6, so you have to do... This many ways to shuffle it. Okay. Uh, <coughs> the previous case, uh, we were mindful of the ordering, right? Uh, M I is different than I M. But in some cases, the order doesn't matter. So let's say here's an example. Let's say you you, you have an ice cream shop or ice cream tr truck where they have uh, five flavors. Five flavors. So strawberry, vanilla, chocolate, pecan, what else? Uh, mango. Okay. Five flavors. And then you're trying to order a cup, one cup, okay, and which, which uh, can hold two scoops, two scoops, right? And then you are kind of wondering, okay, if I choose the two flavors to be different, how many different ways can you choose two flavors to be in this cup out of the five? Sounds like a, a nice question to think about, right? Okay, so uh, you could have something like, let's write some, some of them down. We can't write all of them. Uh, SV. At strawberry and vanilla could be one strawberry and chocolate, maybe vanilla and chocolate, or pecan and mango, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's, that's all the possible, and you can write all the possible ways. And at first, this question seems to have nothing to do with what we had before, but you can change the question uh, into some, something similar to the previous one by thinking of it this way. See, what is, what is uh, strawberry vanilla? It's like you have SVCPM, that's like yes, yes, no, no, no. Do you agree? Strawberry chocolate would be yes, no, yes, yes, uh, no, no. Okay. And vanilla chocolate would be no, yes, yes, no, no. Okay. This will be what? No, 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 no. Yes, yes. Okay. So choosing two, two flavors corresponds to exactly permuting what? Permuting? Three N's and two yeses, right? It's just <coughs> um, so you can rephrase the question as how many ways can you shuffle N and then Y Y? Okay, then we know the answer. What is it? What goes on the top? Five factorial. What's on the bottom? Three factorial. Two factorial. Okay, and that's going to be five times four. Three to one will cancel with this one, and you divide by two. Oh, there's only 10 different ways. Okay. Smaller than I expected. Uh, N choose K. This one's called the combination. So it's read N choose K. And what it means is number of ways to choose K items from N available items. Two probabilities. Uh, I want to talk about uh, two principles of calculating probabilities. One is the addition principle. Oh, uh, I, before then, I just realized that uh, some of you don't understand the, the set theoretical notation. Uh, A and B, uh, with capital letters, what I'm going to write here are what's called a set. Set is like a, uh, it's a collection of items. <coughs> that's, that's what a set is, where uh, multiplicity is are not considered. So if you have A, A, B, C, that's the same as just A, B, C. That's, that's a set. Um, and if you want to combine two different sets to make a bigger set, you call this as this. Okay. That's called, uh, this is like set of elements in a or uh, in A or B. So uh, if you take an item, if it's in here or there, it could be in both, then it's in the this union set. Okay? And the important thing here is the word or. So it, 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 as a quick reference, you should really think of U as a corresponding uh, symbol for the or. Okay? And then A intersect B, the intersection of two sets. So this is called a union, that's called an intersection. And this is set of elements in both A and B, both A and B. And the important word here is and, okay? So uh, A and B, uh, so this, an element that is in this set, it <coughs> belongs to A and also in B. I think uh, here you, you learned Boolean algebra in uh, digital electronics or something, right? How many of you learned Boolean algebra already? 
Oh, this is before that one? Okay, all right. I thought you guys did that. Yes, yes. Oh, that's, that's only for E, right? No? No, for programming? And Max also did. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, uh, that, that, that's, a, that's the notation, okay? So anytime you see this U symbol, you should think of OR. Uh, anytime you see this cap symbol, this is called N. All right. So what is the addition principle? The addition principle goes like this. Probability of some element to belong to A or B is same as probability of it belonging to A, probability of it belonging to B minus the probability of it belonging to A and B. So let me give you an illustration of this by a simple question. So uh, example, uh, would it be 50%? No, because there is some overlap between the two, right? Uh -huh. So. There's, there's a way to quickly do this without this formula, which is just to say, oh, okay, 300 plus 200, that's 500, but 50 of them are overlaps, right? They, they, they both, so you subtract 50. Mm -hmm. So it's 450 out of the 1,000, so what's the an answer? 45 percent, okay, 0.45. So that, that's a quick way to do it, uh, but I intentionally made it like, like that so that you can see why this formula also works. So uh, here uh, we can say the probability of football or basketball okay, is going to be the probability of football plus probability of the basketball minus the probability of football and basketball. Okay. And then What's the probability of the football? 300 out of 1,000. 1,000. What's the probability of playing basketball? 200. 200 out of 1,000. Minus, what's the probability of playing both? Well, 50. there are apparently only 50 out of 1,000 kids that do both sports. So you do this. Okay. And then, of course, again, the same story. 300 plus 200 minus 50, that's 450 over 1,000. This is exactly 0 0.45 as we know. Okay? So that's the addition principle. If you want to know the probability of having uh, something, some event A happening or event B happening, you just have to add the probabilities of each event, and then you have to subtract the case when both events may occur. So uh, in, on Tuesday, we talked about uh, an event in a sample space, right? Now then there's the product principle. which is that if I want to know probability of A and B happening, that's same as probability of A, uh, probability of A times probability of B when A happened. So there's a a, a new notation that I'm introducing. This, this here means that uh, if something happens, sometimes uh, the condition of the other, uh, the, the probability of the other one happening changes. So this, this one here is what's called a conditional probability. Additional probability. Uh, as an example, <coughs> yeah, so throwing without replacement. And uh, for this one, 
think of the following. You have, uh, uh, so probability of uh, the first one being red. So I'll just put R1 to denote that the first one's red, okay? So the probability that the first one will be red is what? 70%. 70%. 7 out of 10. Right? This is 7 out of 10. But what you want to know is the probability of both ones, both drawings, uh, the first drawing and the second drawing both being red, right? And uh, you can actually rewrite this as the first drawing is a red one and the second drawing is a red one as well. Does that make sense? First, okay. And then according to this formula, it seems to me that it should be PR1 <coughs> times PR2 under R1. Okay? <coughs> All right. We already know what this is. This is 7 out of 2. Well, let's think about what this means. If the first drawing was a red ball, and you're not putting it back, right? You're, you're selecting one, and then you're selecting another one. So you took the one red ball out. Now, how many red balls are in the jar? Six. Six. And how many white balls? Three. 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 So what's the probability of getting a red ball? Six out of? Six out of? Nine. 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 Six out of that. So it's going to be two thirds, which means then be five, so it'll be seven out of fifteen. So that'll be the answer, right? Is that okay? Right. So this example makes this conditional probably kind of clear, right? See, sometimes if an event happens, then it changes the probability of the second one. Right? So uh, maybe another question you can ask, another example could be the same story, but what's the probability of getting a white ball for the first drawing and then red ball in the second one? So three out of ten for the first one. Three out of ten for the first one. And then seven out of nine for the second one. Seven out of nine for the second one. Thank you. So it'll be uh, seven out of thirty. Okay. Right. Now, here's another example. What's the probability where one white, one red? Well, that's like P. Oh, by the way, uh, a lot of probability books, if you read them, uh, because th this appears so frequently, they would just omit it. So what looks like a multiplication is really and. Okay, so I'm going to just write the shorthand. It's like either W1R2, right? Or it's W2R1, right? So having one white and one red would be, it's saying like, the first drawing must be the white one, and the second one should be the red one. It's either this or the other case, when we have uh, R1 and then W2. That's the only way you can get a one red and one white when you draw two balls, right? Do you agree? But then, it's a, it's a union, right? So what can you do now? For the union, we have the addition principle, right? We have have to add plus just like that, right? And then what is this? Well, we, we do the same thing. Oh, we actually did this one. This is 7 out of 30. What is this one? 7 out of 10 times? 3 out of 9. 3 out of 9, right? Oh, that's also 7 out of 30, right? So it's uh, 7 out of 15. So that's what you said. Okay? Is that okay? 
Now, it's always good to be able to solve the same question in two different ways because then it kind of gives you more confidence that what you, your, what you got as your answer is correct, okay? So let me try to uh, give you a different way to think about this first question. So, uh, you can think of all the balls in here as numbered, 1 through 10, okay? And 1 through 7 is red and 8, 9, 7, uh, 8, 9 10 are, are white, okay? So, uh, then what you do is you, you can think about the, the sample space as every possible way of taking two balls out of the jar, right? So you're choosing two items from 10. How many ways are there? How many ways can you do, choose two out of 10? Be 10 factorial over two factorial. Times a factorial, right? That's, that's, so, so choosing two balls out of 10, right? And we learned this. What is this? This is 10 choose 2. Do you agree? Yeah. Which is 10 factorial, 2 factorial, A factorial. Oh, I should have written down the formula for you so you can easily remember this. Uh, the formula for this is if you have N choose K, that's same thing as n factorial, k factorial, and n minus k factorial. Now, uh, you know, I, we're, we're basically covering um, like a week's worth of counting in, in just one lesson, so it is a lot. Uh, but let me just try to remind you how we got this formula. This is like, uh, if you have n items and you're choosing k, that's like, no, 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 yes, yes, yes for some of them. So uh, k of them will be yeses, and n minus k will be nos, and you're shuffling them. So they're a total of n letters, and k of them are the same, and n minus k are the same, so you divide by these. Does that make sense? We just did that, right? OK, so that's what you get, and that's going to be 10 times 9 over 2, because uh, 10 times 9 and then 8 factorial comes after, that's going to cancel with a factorial. Two factors is two, so be 45. Okay. But now, uh, out of all those, we only want to know the case where both are red. So that's like choosing two balls only from balls number one through seven, right? How many ways can you choose two balls out of balls number one through seven? Choose two red balls from seven balls, right? What is that? Seven factorial over. Seven choose two, which is seven factorial over. Two factorial. Two factorial, two factorial five, five factorial. factorial, which is seven times six over two, which is seven times three, which is twenty-one, right? And then you do twenty-one divided by forty-five. And then seeing that both top and bottom are divisible by 3, you see that it's 7 over 15. Same exact answer as before. OK? Yeah. So it's, it's the same, same answer as before. So that's why I'm, 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 I'm very sure that this, this formula is correct. All right. 